start of our first tech sessions um, after this. So today I have my colleague uh, Marvin, uh, who is also the AI MVP. I will let Marvin uh, take over and uh, you know kind of uh, tell us about uh, data and form extraction. I think uh, there are a lot of new uh, stuff that's coming up on the area. So Marvin, all yours. Okay. Um, so good morning, everyone. So uh, glad to actually see everyone uh, joining today. And thank you for joining us uh, in the early Saturday morning. So I believe uh, you have joined uh, any session and uh, have uh, get some ideas about the AI, Microsoft AI principle, and uh, some of the ethics of the uh, AI practices in the market or industry. So uh, yeah, so I hope the session was a uh, brilliant and uh, useful to you guys. So uh, to kickstart the today's uh, one of the Microsoft AI sessions, so we are going to talk about uh, create real value in your business process by automated uh, data and form extra extraction. Right. So uh, for those uh, who are new to our community, uh, I'm Marvin Heng. And um, uh, this is my blog, uh, techconnect.com. I O and uh, some of the teams in uh, our teams is actually also doing in other parts like dot net, um, uh, Azure, or stuff like it. Okay, so uh, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, Medium, and GitHub using this uh, tag at hatch and hang, right? So if you haven't uh, follow me, just uh, don't don't hesitate to actually subscribe, right? All right, so first of all, um, I believe uh, uh, many of you actually encountered this, uh, uh, I mean, you have heard about this before, uh, a job called data entry. It's a, it's a job until today we still see it happening around. And uh, uh, it's, it's a job that um, still pretty much uh, available and uh, keep hiring on. And uh, many companies actually, um, hiring to actually uh, uh, a lot of people to actually uh, entering, uh, transferring their paper form kind of data or forms into the digital format, right? So uh, people paid like uh, probably a few dollars per hour, uh, some probably lower, some probably higher. So, but um, it takes a lot of effort uh, to actually transfer that kind of uh, information from from a uh, paper format, paper form to a digital form. And uh, I believe uh, uh, many of us can actually visualize how actually stressful is the job is because um, try to imagine you have to enter probably 100 to 1000 uh, kind of uh, volume per day. So it's, it's not a joke, right? So uh, people tends to actually uh, lose out their patience, their, their, um, their uh, energy to actually doing this kind of job, right? So, so why is the data entry jobs in the market? So it, it, it can actually including kind of data processing, uh, typees, uh, uh, word processors, all this. So there are many entry jobs, even in, in uh, some of the MNC or the big multinational companies, they are actually high hiring these kind of jobs, even uh, probably some of the bachelor degrees or master students, graduates to do these kind of jobs. But uh, as we know, it's, it's required some forms of uh, skills, right? And, and uh, kind of uh, knowledge as well, right? So, um, but then try to imagine over thousands or hundreds uh, forms per day, it could be more than that, uh, we have to actually enter. So why don't we, 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 we kind of uh, try to imagine, okay, so we are basically um, just putting ourselves into a, a room full of the paper forms or the survey forms kind of thing, especially I think uh, survey forms that we have to actually transfer. So glad that we have a lot of tools that uh, people actually started to using like Microsoft forms or Google forms kind of uh, technology, but still there are plenty outside in Probably in Singapore, you can see uh, in at, at MRT stations, in the campus, uh, university campus, or some of the 
uh, shopping malls, they will actually come to you and ask you, hey, uh, man, you know, help, help, actually help us to actually fill up this paper form and we will give you something, right? But uh, it's, I know it's still pretty common today, but slightly reduced uh, with the uh, online forms kind of things uh, exist today. But still, there are a lot of people doing this. And at the background, there are people actually uh, transferring all this data to the computer. Right? So, uh, so I'm going to actually introduce you uh, 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 Microsoft AI. So what is Microsoft AI all about? So we know uh, there are issues for the uh, digitalizations of the forms, and we have to actually extract all the formats from the paper to to digital. But uh, no worries. So we, we, we will go along this journey, and we start off with Microsoft as well. So Microsoft AI and Azure is kind of a, a complement each other and exist together. So we have uh, micro, we, when we talk about Microsoft Azure, basically we are talking about uh, intelligent cloud and intelligent edge, right? So basically we have the intelligent cloud here, where we have uh, Microsoft AI exists in in this piece of thing, right? So from intelligent cloud to intelligent edge. We have uh, Azure Collective Service. We have, uh, I think uh, many of you actually get to know already. So Azure Collective Service was uh, actually launched in, I think, uh, 2017, if not mistaken, right? So we have a uh, vision API, we have speech API, we have language API. So this, the whole thing we are actually putting into the intelligent cloud. But with the extensions to the intelligent edge, we have, uh, we have a technology like containerized uh, services. So with Docker, with a lot of uh, other technologies. So we can actually deploy these kind of intelligent services to the offline uh, devices like IoT devices, Raspberry Pi uh, and other uh, uh, the device, uh, the IoT devices, even our mobile phone as well. So in uh, backend, 2019, I think I demo one of the um, example of where we can actually putting in the facial API into uh, a face API into the uh, Zavarin apps. So that is one of the usage where we putting the intelligent cloud and the intelligent edge together, right? So Microsoft AI overall is is not only about uh, computer vision or or uh, machine learning, but basically it is uh, the uh, uh, levels where we can actually uh, leverage Microsoft Azure uh, infrastructure services. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of uh, infrastructure services like uh, Cosmos DB, SQL DB, we have uh, some of the VM, Data uh, Science Scientist VM, so DSVM. So we have a lot of this technology available in uh, Microsoft Azure. Right, so uh, on the top, of course, we are talk uh, today. We are going to talk about the the uh, highest level kind of uh, the, the the highest level kind of uh, services. So we are talking about both framework. We are uh, conversational AI. Everyone, uh, I think most of you actually know about it. Then we have the trend service, where uh, this connective service, or we sometimes we call it Azure connective service. We call it Microsoft connective service, where we have the uh, all the pre-built kind of models available already or pre-trained model available out of the rack, right? Then we have uh, custom uh, custom services, Azure Machine Learning. Um, we, we talk about we are using leveraging the Azure Machine Learning Studio, kind of, uh, things like that to actually like uh, to train the model. So whereas the cognitive service is pre-trained, while we have customized uh, services using the machine learning studio right then of course we have uh, we are when we talk about this ai service and infrastructure then we are definitely we are also focusing on ai tools so without the tools helping us to actually getting our life easier so of course uh, we, we we have uh, all these uh, tools around in uh, i mean in the in the uh, azure environment to actually help us to uh, to train the models to understand better about the AI, 
right? So we have a machine learning studio, we have a machine learning workbench, we have a C CNTK, we have a, a TensorFlow kind of things uh, being supported. So uh, Henry asked us uh, whether we have uh, any example that we can use for frontline workers. I try to under, uh, um, ex yeah. explain that later on after the, uh, the uh, demo, right? So uh, of course we have, uh, if you are talking about frontline so workers, uh, like uh, healthcare workers or some of the agencies uh, uh, during the pandemic. Later on, I'll speak about that, right? So, uh, yeah, it's a good question, right? So I will talk about that, that uh, in, in uh, detail later, right? So we have Azure Cognitive Service overall. So for those who are new to Cognitive Service, so we have a Vision API, right? So we have Vision API, uh, we have a Speech API. So Vision API actually understand about the facial emotions kind of things, even so, some of the things like uh, taking photo then after that we will know why is it uh, why is the object or entities inside the photo and we have um, uh, face verification where uh, any just now mentioned about that we when we, we, we started off with this face API then we talk about the uh, ethical right so facial verifications uh, facial recognition as well so we have this kind of technologies that are helping us to actually um, understand the images of video better, including the video indexer that we, uh, I think Microsoft, uh, many of the Microsoft events actually use that to actually getting out the, the sentiment of the uh, speech or reactions from the uh, audience, right? So we have uh, speech uh, uh, recognition, so we, uh, we can actually improve the quality and we also can do the uh, captions of the meeting then we can actually under the identify who is actually talking as well right using the speech api then we have language api right to recognize or recognize what uh what's the intentions of a center uh user and we understand the uh, the actions that user want to carry out then we have knowledge which we can actually leveraging the bing uh, the technologies behind the Bing search engine and uh, a lot of things behind this, right? Where we can actually uh, pull out some of the uh, data from the internet. Right, then we have search as well. Okay, so uh, why Azure Cognitive Service uh, as, uh, I mean, why do we choose Azure Cognitive Service or now we call Microsoft Cognitive Service? Uh, anyway, it's the same thing. So it's like different brand, uh, marketing model. so basically they are the same and uh, when we why we choose Azure Cognitive Service and over over others uh, scenario like the custom services uh, of course um, people tends to go to the custom services I uh, I think it's a it's a level kind of entry things so when we have a, a short of talents and resources probably Azure Cognitive Service will be the better choice for us to uh, enter in, into AI. If you are new to AI, then probably Cognitive Service is better, right? Then if you have a lot of uh, resources, you have uh, 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 capital, you have the talents pool uh, in your company, then uh, you can go for the custom uh, machine learning or AI, right? So the first thing first, Azure Cognitive Service is easy to roll out on your own because everything is trained already. Um, Microsoft trained uh, the, the, the model for you. So basically you just get it, uh, get your application and integrate in. Just few lines of code will do, right? So it's super easy. Uh, of course it, it requires some of the developers uh, kind of a skill set as well. Uh. So if you are a Python, then you have to actually understand why is the, uh, the way to call the cognitive service or this. If you are uh, .NET, then basically you have to understand how it works. Okay, then uh, 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 it's flexible. It, whether you are from iOS, spec, uh, I mean, you are iOS developer, Android developer, Windows developer, web developer, uh, it's the same set of API code that you were actually uh, using. Yeah, of course, uh, it's, it's anyway, it's a RESTful API. 
so you can use the, uh, leverage uh, some of the HTTP calling to actually process for you, right? And it's, uh, it's one of the uh, uh, things that for the cognitive service is tested by Microsoft uh, research team, Bing team, and as well as some of the Azure machine learning uh, team. So uh, many expertise working together to actually ramping up these uh, services and making it better uh, year after year. And of course, when we talk about this, uh, we, we couldn't have, uh, I mean, we could, couldn't not to have uh, quality uh, documentations and sample of code available in the market. So Microsoft actually published a lot of the sample code and documentations on, the, on their website as well as GitHub. So there are a lot of uh, resources available to actually assist you if uh, you need some help, okay? So overall, these are the services that we are talking about for Microsoft AI or Microsoft Cognitive Services in specific. So we have uh, ranging from computer vision, emotion, vest, video indexer, form recognizer, custom vision, and all the way to Bing uh, technologies, right? So uh, I think um, these are pretty much everything that uh, launched or available in the market today, right? Uh, okay, so, uh, so today uh, we are going to dive in for vision form recognizer, okay? So, uh, form recognizer is uh, is uh, not a uh, new services uh, in the uh, uh, computer uh, cognitive services, but it's relatively new, which launched in two thousand nineteen. All right, so when the first version coming out, okay. And uh, today we are talking about a two point one preview, okay, and two uh, two point zero uh, general available so GA. Right, so what does a form recognizer do? Extract, so first of all, form recognizer extract the text and data from the business form and document, which we often talk about uh, when we say, uh, okay, we have to do data entry transferring from the paper format to a digital format. So that is uh, for basically form recognizer do. So yeah, it, today you can actually extract the text and, uh, uh, text and the table structure that are available on the paper form with, with uh, some sort of uh, digitalization technology and uh, AI technology. So you can actually custom train the model. You can, uh, it can actually support a uh, printed and handwritten form. So of course, when we talk about intelligent cloud services, we are not short of uh, content con support as well, which is the intelligent edge support, All right? So uh, form recognizer also uh, split into pre-trained models like uh, receipts model business card models so they also support uh, 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 I think most of the tax taxes uh, kind of things uh, uh, in US or in uh, elsewhere of the uh, world they also can actually extract how much is the taxes that you pay right so also uh, today uh, uh, with uh, if not mistaken, it's 2.0 starting onwards. Uh, Microsoft, uh, the form recognizer actually support uh, layouts API where we can actually extract the text, uh, selection marks, um, like the chat box kind of things, uh, and table structure using the HD or CR. So today, uh, pretty pretty powerful today where uh, form recognizer can do a lot of things. Uh, I think last year when we speak about this, we don't have this yet. This year we have this uh, layout API, so it can actually recognize a lot of things uh, in the form, uh, invoices, uh, survey form, kind of thing, right? Uh, okay, so this. so what's new in form recognizer? So it's it's briefly we go through. So uh, today is two point zero GA. Then we have uh, two point one uh, uh, preview November updates. Um, then we have a uh, new SDK support. For .NET, Python, Java, JavaScript, so a lot of uh, libraries is available today. Then we have a uh, table enhancement, which is more more better than last year. Then we have a uh, currency support and uh, other many other things. Okay, so this is something that we discussed just now. 
right so we have the new pre-trained model which is available only in 2.1's preview and onwards uh, where we have the pre-built model for business cards extraction right uh, and it's support until now i think it's only english right uh, right so for other uh, for layout then uh, we have a new language being supported which is the japanese language okay so uh, what's news in other things in form recognizer so we have feedback loop uh, we can actually adding uh, keep adding on um, the new training set to improve the models okay then we have auto label documentation which uh, it will actually help you to uh, auto label the new documentations based on the previous uh, trend uh, documentation All right so okay so i go a little bit faster if uh, you need uh, uh, some uh, you have some question you just leave at the uh, youtube then uh, i will answer uh, that on Marvin, there's a question. Um, I don't know if you answered it before. Um, yeah. That there were examples by for frontline workers. Yeah, I, I will uh, talk about this uh, after the demo. Right? All right. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. All right. So uh, let's go to the demo. So I would like to actually encourage everyone. Uh, Okay. So I have the uh, application right here. So this is the applications that we I uh, demoed last year. Uh, it's available on GitHub, but uh, this year I actually update to the latest uh, SDK, which rather than I be, I writing my own, is you can see still see the code uh, pretty much the last year. Uh, when the SDK is not available, I write my own RESTful uh, services to get and train the, train the model, right? And this year, I'm going to simplify it. So you see, the code is super long for one single function to carry out one of the single function. But this uh, year... Marvin, just uh, yep. sorry to interrupt. Uh, can you zoom in a bit? Uh, it's a little uh, bit difficult to see. Uh, sure. uh, let me see how can I zoom in. Ah, okay all right so i make it bigger all right so you see last year we have a, a long uh a pretty pretty long of the code but this year we uh, we can actually short shorten it to just few line of code so first i write a uh, authentication client so which is a private uh, kind of uh, method right just few line of code so then after that i just uh, call the api so this year we have a lot of api available so you can see uh, we have a business card we have a content we have custom form we have invoices and receipts so uh, i think the the 2.0 or 2.1 uh, sdk uh, is pretty comprehensive so that we can actually focusing on the um, our own logic our business uh, logic rather than we have we need a lot of technical skills to actually understand okay what i what are the things that i need to pass it in uh how do i transform the data from one model to another entity right so uh really really just fit two lines basically just two line of codes uh, we need to actually put in it, right so yeah so it's uh, this one is analyzed layout so which is one of the new api available, uh, new service available uh, in the 2.0 then uh, receipt is to uh, receipt it has been available since 1.0 but it's getting better then we have the business card available in b2.1 uh, right okay so i just uh yeah so pretty much these are the codes i will publish this uh, to my github mm -hmm. later on and i will i will uh, share with you guys and you guys just go to the git, my github and and uh, see what uh what i'm doing with the code right okay um, let me, sorry let me get up my this one Give me a second. 
Right. So these are the uh, form recognizer. Uh, this is the form recognizer that I have built. Right. So uh, to be safe, I actually go through. I mean, when I do a uh, application, I usually go through uh, my own API so that I can handle the business logic side. So of course, if you are purely mobile apps, you can go straight to the uh, to Microsoft uh, uh, form recognizer API. So yeah. So let me let me give you some ideas. So this is the this is the pictures of the form or the invoices that we have for uh for demo purposes, right? So this is the this is the one. So we have a company, we have the address, then we have the basically the content of it. Right. Okay, so when we so when we enter this uh, uh, set of uh, invoice, so we we will have the API calling for us. I mean the it basically call do authentication, then it recognize the content from the uh, yeah. And this layout, I don't have to give any trend model like the version one point It has uh, some sort of a trend model behind already. To recognize all the table structure and uh, some of the details like that, so you can see that it can recognize my contoso. So this is basically some balance between a custom trend model as well as the OC, normal OCR, right? So it can give you all the result like the invoice for. Okay, so things like that. Okay, so this is the OCR part. The above is OCR part. So OCR don't tell you why is the tables, uh, it can actually recognize the top only, right? I, I mean, it can uh, recognize all the taxes, but it cannot tell you that, hey, there is a table at the bottom. But this layout actually help us to understand, okay, there is a table in there and there are some of the data that you want to capture. So it, it even tell you why is the index available in, in this form. So this is zero, one, two, three, four. Like that okay so it can tell you okay invoice is actually number zero which is the first column right so uh, it basically gives you some uh, idea about the, the form inside here all right okay then we have the receipt uh receipt pretty much uh is still almost similar to uh, 1.0 but getting better support uh, more languages and of course, uh, even support the uh, handwritten text nowadays, right? So let's see whether you can capture this fourteen point five and the uh, one dollar sixty three cent, right? So let's give it a try. Right. So these are the. Okay, so the, it can actually tell you, okay, there is merchant name, merchant address, phone number, all this, right? So I just uh, want to actually curious about whether you can capture this, right? 14.5, uh, 1 point, okay, this is something that is uh, probably wrong. Uh, it should be 1.63, yeah? So, yeah, so there is some uh, inaccuracy, but you see the confidence level, then you can actually put in the uh, threshold that you want to actually, whether you want to accept this value or not. Right, so this is a receipt. So you can, if you are developing fintech kind of application, you might want to actually use uh, leverage one of these uh, uh, service lah. Huh? Okay, then this is the business uh, card uh, API. Uh, but I think there is uh, some uh, issue with it. Uh, so I actually feel back to Microsoft about it. Uh, it can it can actually detect the layout, but it's not. Uh, it cannot extract the value from it. But uh, I will show you another tools later on. All right. So this is the uh, updates for two point one. Basically, we have uh, these technologies available. Of course, we are still having the we still having the uh, custom trend model, which is uh, the analy uh, Basically, you putting in a lot of uh, trend documents, a training set of documents. Then uh, it would generate a, a model for you. Then after that, you use that model to actually uh, analyze your uh, the layouts or the the, the forms. 
Okay, so yeah, so I just do a quick one because we are short of time. Okay, so uh, so what I demo just now is basically how I how fast uh, I basically how simple you can actually build an API on top of the uh, form recognizer. Okay, so uh, after you extract the data, you can straight away um uh, getting that more entities or result and putting storing in your DB, right? Then after that, we have the sample uh, sample form recognizer tool. So previously, uh, I think we don't have this kind of tools available in the in the uh, industry. So Microsoft built it. So basically, it's a it's a tools for uh, us who are new to form recognizer to actually play around with uh, what are the services available for form recognizer. We have trend, we have labels, we have uh, rest samples, and oh things like that. So I will demo. Uh, about this. It's, it's basically all the services that you want to play around is available on these tools. Right? So let me put out this uh, video. Uh, okay, this here. Right? So these are the, this is the tools. So I'm using the preview version because I'm, I would like to demo on the business uh, uh, card uh, API. So this is the same set of uh, data available so this is the same set of the API that uh, I actually integrate to my API. Uh, so this one is actually, uh, you can see it actually giving giving you some sort of UI already. So you don't have to uh, code your own UI to actually uh, test what's the things happening behind. So let me let me just copy it out. It's it's basically the same. Right. Uh, okay. So just now I mentioned business card is a bit of glitch uh, on my API. I'm not sure whether it's my problem or some probably my my uh, SDK a bit out of that. So let let's try and see what is happening if I do this business card uh, analyze and then uh, and then fix right. So we have uh, this. Oops. Uh, so two, I have time until ten forty. Uh. Okay. Uh, so you can see this is the uh, name card available, right? In, uh, I have the name card over here. So now I would like to actually uh run the analysis right so basically what i did for uh, with my api is run the analysis so i pass it in the url then i run the analysis of course you can what you can do for your site your application is uh, you can uh, taking in the block or your apps is actually uploading the block then after uh, up uploading the file to the block storage then after that from there you get passing in the uh, url to your application your API, right? So you can actually analyze this is the name, first name, last name. So basically, first name, last name. So it tells you every uh, job title, senior researcher, kind of things, cloud AI department, all this thing, right? So you can see it, it can capture pretty much uh, accurate, I would say, quite accurate over here. So yeah, so you can actually, uh, even mobile phone as well. So they understand even you are using the abbreviation or the short forms of the label, right? So company names, uh, control so, right? So I think this is a, a kind of a good way if we are building some uh, social applications. So just snap, snap the business card, then you can boom, then you go. Uh, I think we will have to suggest uh, Microsoft to capture the title as well, like the doctor, right? So, uh. It, it will be a good, uh, good uh, feedback for them. Right. So this is the business card uh, API. Right. Then we have layout API. So let me see. Okay. Layout API. So my API don't have any visualization. More, more like a technical kind of uh, application. Okay. So Microsoft uh, sample tool giving you this idea. Right. So. Just pitching. 
Okay, this is the form that we run the layout. Okay, so it tells you about the company name. Basically, layouts don't tell you uh, what is the things about. Lah. So we have to do tagging on our own. So we have to tag, this is a company name, this is the address, and this is the customer's uh, company name and address. Then, of course, layout, the good thing about layout is they provide the table extraction. Okay, so that was the pretty difficult things last time. So now we have this table. So imagine we want to render this thing to HTML. So let's see the, so basically, yeah, so the result is the same. So just now I mentioned, uh, we, if we want to render this table, so it's a JSON format. Yeah, so the, we can just uh, based on this, then we render it on the front end or our application or our web application. Right? So we just based on this, then we render something like this. Uh, what, what Microsoft did for us. So this is the demo. We see if it's, uh, it's not a picture, it's basically a, a, a HTML. Right, so this is the layout. So, uh, yeah, so when we talk about this, we can actually set it together. Yeah. So things are like this selection mark. If we have the chat box uh, forms, then we can actually put in, uh, it will detect for you. Right, so how do we use these tools? So I create, so basically when you go to the font, uh, F -O -T -T dot, uh, uh Azure, websites.net so it will ask you to create a connections so these connections so it will require some things uh display name which you can actually enter any display name so long it's a string format then we have a uh, block storage uh, block container which i set up so you just enter this uh, as well block enter block container uh, as as url it will actually guide you uh through as well so when you first enter, then you want, okay, so we talk about preview, then we talk about layout, then now we talk about the custom uh, trend model. Okay, so if you, if we are new to this, you can click this quick start guide, uh, quick, quick start guide to actually uh, follow one by one and step by steps uh, to set up this uh, tools. Okay, so if I have new, pro uh, first we will create a new project for the trend model. So first thing first, we need the project name. Then we need the security token, which is the yeah you can just put in, uh, which is the uh, uh, what the form recognizer token. Okay. Then we have the uh basically the key. Then we have the uh training the the source connection. So you can add add a new connections here. Okay. So we will tell uh, the applications where to pull the, uh, the the training set of data, right? Then the folder, then we have the form recognizer service, which is the endpoint. Then we have API key. Then, uh, yeah, then you choose the preview, the, the version that you want to use, right? Then you just set the folder, okay? So for quick, I have the uh, things be set up ready and also upload to uh, uh, Microsoft Box storage. Right. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, I have the. <clears throat> so, from. Sorry. Uh, the first time you set up this new project, you have to make sure your block storage already contains some of the training set data. Right. Okay. So then after that, when you, when you load this application, it will, it will tell you whether you want to run the layout analytics. You will notice that last year we don't have this layout API. So since 2.0, we have this uh, layout API. So Microsoft actually putting this together with the, I mean, to complement the custom trend model. 
to make our life easier. So the layout will understand what are the tags available or what are the data available in this form. Then we just proceed to tagging all the uh, labels or we call it labeling or tagging. Okay, so we can actually just click this. Okay, then you see I already label as company name. This this is things that I label on my own. We can actually remove it. Uh, of course, you can leverage the auto label as well if you want. So, okay. So currently, there is no company name, right? So when I delete, it actually go across the board and delete the company name for me. Right. So what I can do is I let tagging it. So I do tagging. So I say company name. So you notice that uh, for the first time when you want to actually do this, okay, you have to tag every single form of it. So you just tag, click it, and tag it, company name, which is I think which is a uh, pretty easier for us. Right? So I can even tag uh, the bottom here. So you notice that it's similar to layouts. It can actually provide the table structure. So even before the custom trend model, okay, we even we before we start the trend, uh, the custom trend, it already can actually scan through the layout for us, even the table structure, which is the good thing. I think Microsoft did pretty simplify our uh, life. So you can actually auto label and run layouts here. So right, so. Good, I think it's awesome. All right, so uh, so after you taking every piece of things, then you can now uh, do a training. So I run the training. So actually, I already sent uh, last night. So it, it actually go down for uh, step by step. Taking, then we train, then we compose, then uh, I forgot this. Uh, I think this. Uh, this is analyzed, right? So, so we can do the testing like that. Okay. So after you train, so you can download the JSON files. Okay. So, I think this is the formats that we have. Okay, so we have this. So you see the data set, uh, I mean the result over here. Okay, so it will tell you it's succeeded and what is the, what is the API being used, uh, what was version is. So it can tell you the text available. <clears throat> so good thing about form recognizer is let the key pair, key value pair kind of concept. So it's just uh, getting the data out of the form. So so you might want to ask whether it can actually extract since we only take the uh the top part the header of the form whether it can actually uh, detect the table as well so as we know layout api already in there so it can actually extract and with the pretty much the same thing so log row and column index okay then it will tell you the uh, data right in there so you can capture the value of the particular row and columns, right? So that is the good thing about that. Uh, okay, then, all right. So we can uh, we can uh, try one thing. So I right. So this is the form. Then I run the analysis. So you based on the trend, uh, our custom trend model, which we train just now to analyze this form. So you. Yeah, so it will take a little bit of time. So you notice that it only giving us the top part, but of course in detail you can actually download it. So just now we we said about auto training again. So basically you can actually edit and upload again to the training set. Then it will appear in the training set data. So good or not? <laughs> so I think it's pretty comprehensive for the two point one and API and as well as this preview too. 
I think we can make use of this uh, to play around with uh, to understand about uh, form recognizer in details, right? So that uh, if you want to, if you have difficulty to actually set up this tool, just let me know. Just ping me on Twitter or or the GitHub. Just leave me a comment, right? So uh, my GitHub is here. I have uh, about four set, uh, four minutes left. So please, yeah, just go to GitHub and follow me. Right? Just click follow. Then uh, if you have any question, you just ping me. Right? So let's back here and go back to this form recognizer too. Okay, so uh, a common question that people ask is the language support. So uh, in 2.0, uh, pretty much uh, is English language only. But uh, in 2.1 preview, we have this uh, other language, mainly is Chinese, uh, Japanese, and most of the uh, uh, languages, uh, common languages around the world, or most used. All right, so things you may be interested, I have uh, actually published uh, uh, some of my AI experiments projects in this link. So you can actually go and put it pull to your locker, pull the report to your locker. And uh, extras uh, add on for this connective service. So if you want to understand more, just feel free and click it. I will upload the slides and share with the uh, I mean the organizing team, so we can actually compile and upload together later on. Right? Uh, thank you, uh, Marvin. You can actually uh, paste the link from the chat. Um, so what will happen is you know it will stay mm -hmm. on the YouTube channel. Uh, so if you want, uh, uh, paste it in there. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. Then, uh, one second. Then I need to close my phone. Okay. So, uh, uh, yeah, thank you. So, about this. Uh, and, uh, uh, just now one question for Ken. How can, I mean, what's any examples that we can actually, uh, understand, uh, whether we can use this form recognizer, right? So, uh, actually you can, uh, use these form recognizing uh, services for healthcare. YouTube. YouTube. Sorry? No, sorry, go ahead. Ah, okay. So basically, we can actually uh, making use of these tools or the services if you are building uh, healthcare uh, services or, or, or applications or even some of the uh, uh, front lines of staff in your industry says uh, uh, banking uh, banking staff I mean uh, the, the, the the one who actually always sitting at the front desk so you can actually ask uh, I mean you can build some application use leveraging this form recognizer to rather than just uh, just uh, uh, I mean asking them to actually fill out the form then after that you have to enter one by one end of the day Basically, you can ask them either is use, making use of the online survey uh, platform like the forms, uh, Google's uh, forms or Microsoft forms, right? Or else if you are using, asking them to fill up the paper form, I know that is in, inevitable because sometimes we definitely want them to write and sign. So you can ask them to utilize this. I mean, you can build an application utilizing this. Then you capture the paper uh, survey form then Oh, then you go to the uh, the system, right? Then uh, of course, of course, uh, probably in uh, if you are talking about other community service use, use cases, then you can uh, making use of the face verifications where you can actually identify a bit like uh, trace together. Okay, so try to think about trace together. Do not understand your face, but uh, you can. Uh, making use of uh, the first verifications to verify whether this person is DG or not. Okay. And uh, what else if you want to know? Is there any other questions? So uh, we have uh, 10.55, then we have next sessions going on. Let me give me a second and place the link here. Long. Okay, this is the link for uh, 
by reference. If you want to, if you need a slide, uh, just give me a second, uh, whereas I can uh, actually upload to some way. Then after that, I will pass in this chat. So you come back uh, after your other sessions to check it out. Right. So for now, I think it will be better if you just uh, proceed to the next session. Then you just check back for the slides later on. Right. Okay. Thank you for joining me today and i uh, hope it has been a useful session and informative session for you take care and stay safe bye